Hello everyone, Harry Quinn here. We're going to be back to doing some room acoustics for this Wednesday audio tutorial video. Uh, essentially, I've got a measurement mic, I'll take you through what I'm doing. And uh, I want to make some more boxes just to improve the low end and low mid range of my room. So we'll see how we get on with that. This stuff can get incredibly complicated very quickly. And you can see all the treatment that I've already done in the room. Essentially, I've got foam absorption and I've got these uh, boxes, panel absorbers at various thicknesses and dotted around in the pressure zones, higher pressure zones. I won't go into all of the details, but essentially, equilateral triangle between each of these speakers, that way, there, and where I sit, and also where I put this measurement mic. I'm now gonna do a frequency sweep through the capable frequencies of these um, Neumann small near field monitors. Yes, they're ported as well, which is an issue. Um, and then we'll see what the frequency response is at my head. It's better to have a frequency response that's quite flat in the time and frequency amplitude domains, um, but these things are very difficult to achieve sort of in a home, a home studio environment, but uh, in, and particularly in small rooms. But let's, let's do the measurement and see what comes up. Apologies again for the shaky cam, but I'll show you a screenshot and take you through everything. Essentially, it's all pretty flat until we get to about 430, 450 hertz. Um, where I've previously established that there's a bit of an issue with the desk and the, the interaction between um, the bouncing off of sound between the desk. Um, so that's mainly due to that. And then if we look lower down, essentially there's like a five, even up to 10 dB boost um, in places. And, uh, and there's even a bigger one at 65 Hertz, which has always been a big issue. So the main issues are Everything goes up after about 400 hertz, uh, and that's something that I'm going to try and improve at least a bit uh, in this next round of refining the acoustics in the room. The way I'm going to do that is use this Alton Everest book and this formula to make some more of these panels. I do want to say also that the RT60 reverb time in the room is pretty decent, uh, between 100 milliseconds uh, and about 300 milliseconds, which starts ramping up with probably correlating to the design of the ports, but also the, the ringing in the room as well. So the next spot here is just behind the speakers. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be directly behind or any sort of geometry involved, but just to get an idea of where I'm capable of putting a box, which is roughly where that's pointing, um, just to see what the frequency response is there. So let's try that. So behind that speaker there, this is the result. So we've got an issue at 65 hertz, and it's also to do with the room dimensions as well. So what am I going to do behind the speaker? Um, I'll probably just try and tackle this area here. So what does that say? 140, 140 hertz. I'll do another measurement behind the other speaker and on the right hand side here, and see what comes back with. Okay, so we've got the microphone sticking in there. And then if I hit start, Here we go, so I'll apply the same smoothing. So it's a little easier to see, I'm not hiding too many secrets. 135. Again, a bit of an issue there, 260. Sorry, focus there. And uh, yeah, so generally, I'll make a decision on the materials available, but again, behind the speakers I'll go. Then onto the panels, I can design them according to this equation, rearrange it, basic, fairly basic maths. I'll know what the frequency I want to target is. The mass will be dependent on the actual physical material I use as the surface panel. I can measure that with a, you know, I can measure the mass and I can measure the, the size of it. And then, and calculate the surface panel density with that. And then that will give me the depth of the airspace that needs to be inside the box. That's the plan. Uh, I'm just gonna decide now exactly what I'm gonna do with frequencies and, and where. Um, if you do some research, the, each of these boxes is filled with fluffy insulation. And the more insulation and the closer it is against the board, 
the more broad band, it is around that centered frequency, the absorption. Um, so if you put less in, it's just ringing effectively at that frequency. If you put more in, then it's absorbing, broadband absorbing, but less of a peak of absorption. Um, so there's a, a balance to be struck. Obviously, I probably want to go for a slightly more broadband, so I'll be filling it up fairly well with insulation. And what I use with all of that, I'll show you when I build the boxes. Step one of building some new base traps. I'm going to use this equation, and then I need to use this front panel drill a hole in it and use this special scale weigh device and uh, I'll get the mass of it and I'll be able to figure out the surface density. So I put it up and it's pretty conveniently two kilograms. And the next step is to measure the dimensions of the thing and then I'll get the surface density. So the dimensions were 0.582 by 1.22 meters and that gives us 0.71. 004 meters squared in the area and then that allows me to calculate the mass over the area to give the surface density which is 2.81. Then plug that in to this equation here and give me the depth of the box that I'll make out of that material over there. So I plugged in 135 hertz as the targeted frequency and the depth of the boxes need to be about 7 centimeters. The available space is about 38 centimeters so I'll make boxes accordingly. Just about to cut the last piece of the main box material. Other bits are over there. Lots of glue and some screws later, I have two boxes. I need to fill them with some loose insulation. Oh, well, it won't be loose, but I'll sort of tie it down a little bit and then I'll put over this top panel and then try them out and give it a test in the studio. Instead of the loose fiberglass insulation, I'm just going to use some old acoustic foam that I had lying around in this box from some other acoustic experiment that's been chopped up. Um, I'll need to fix it and try and use some, probably use some screws and these plastic shims and then I'll use those to sort of use them as retaining little pieces. Screwing into foam is incredibly difficult, but I'll give it a try. Here are a couple of finished boxes. I'm gonna put them behind the speakers, give them a bit of an acoustical test, uh, but I'm just gonna let them dry out and uh, let the glue firmly set, and then I'll just pack up all this stuff and uh, go to the results. Moment of truth, I put the boxes behind the speakers, and I've just conducted a test with this, and as you can see, there is a small sort of 2 dB reduction uh, in relation to the rest of the response. Um, the phase, I, I didn't keep things exactly in the same position, so the phase and the lines and the, and the top end uh, will probably look a bit different, but definitely I can be fairly confident that there's a about 2 dB reduction in that 130 to 300 or so hertz range. So as a result, probably experiment with moving them around a bit, might put them more here and here, but for now I'll just take a listen and uh, see how it goes from there. So when you get all of these boxes in the corners and in the other corners and above things, this is this and just one extra spare one on the side here, this is the sort of result you can get in a small room so far. One last thing I've just tried, having listened to some music, I've angled the boxes very slightly inwards on this end. Uh, I put my hand literally on the surface of the panel and it's vibrating a little bit more and it's also sounding a bit better in terms of music to my ear. Here is the measurement and it's a little bit more clear that there's a bit more of an improvement in the lower end reduction. Obviously um, the phase in relation to where the mic was yesterday and now has more of an impact on how the top end looks but at least there's some improvement where, where I was hoping to target. So yeah, trial and error, improve as we go. The last thing I can do is using this Element software, I can route the audio through this and insert an EQ plugin to undo some of the mistakes, if you like, of this EQ curve. There's obviously other room correction software available elsewhere, but this is what I'm just doing with my ear um, in accordance to what I'm measuring. So yeah, this is my process at the moment of getting a bit of a better clue on how things sound 
uh, even with all this room treatment.